The day is Monday, January 11th, 2016. The title of this rant will be Looking Forward to Some Type of Peace in the Middle East. Now let's go over a couple things that have happened in the last week. Just today, a hostage situation at a mall in Baghdad. I believe the uh, mall was in the uh, Shiite section of Baghdad, so possibly uh, the killers and the hostage takers are, are Sunni. Don't know that. Uh, that's just, you know... Uh, we have Syrians who are starving in the mountains right outside of Damascus, uh, who are not getting the medical supplies uh, and the food that they need because Syria is holding that up right now, even though there's been some movement. It's getting close to a catastrophe. Uh, we have the Russians uh, who are indiscriminately bombing, uh, let's say, Al-Qaeda in Syria and have bombed... Uh, let's say, a number of civilian areas, even though, let's just say at the same time, the United States says uh, Russia does not have a monopoly on that because we did a fair amount of indiscriminate bombing uh, or really had our numbers off uh, when we were bombing some areas in Iraq from 2003 to about 2009 or whatever. And of course, in Libya, they had a car bomb exploded, killing 50 uh, police training officers somewhere in Libya, uh, they were all on a bus. So there's a lot going on in the Middle East, uh, and I'm not here to talk about anything in the past. I'm just saying we need to find a way to work with everyone and all of the parties in there to find some type of solution. And, of course, it's going to be piecemeal. It's going to be progressive in some instances. It's going to be regressive in other instances. We're not going to necessarily like the results that we're going to see. Uh, it may change the face of the entire Middle East, it may change it for the worse, too. Uh, but we have to try to go in there. Now, there are a lot of bad players there, and there are a lot of, of players who have some, let's just say, priorities that are significantly different uh, than the United States and, let's say, its Western allies. Obviously, Syria and al-Assad, uh, their priorities are completely different than ours. Russia has joined in the fray to help uh, Syria. Uh, they'd throw Assad under the bus if they could get continue to have access uh, to the airport, uh, airport runway in Syria, and also the port where they would have access to it. But, and then we have the, the, the Turks, who uh, don't care about al-Assad, but don't want to, want to work with us in helping the Kurds. Uh, we have the Kurds who would like to have their own homeland uh, in portions of southeastern Turkey, uh, northeastern Syria, uh, Iraq, and Iran. Uh, and, of course, they're almost autonomous right now in Iraq. Uh, so they're going to keep pushing for that. Uh, we have Iran, uh, who is sort of on a, uh, uh, a serious side, <laughs> but is working with us somewhat in, to get rid of uh, ISIL in Iraq. Uh, and of course, Saudi Arabia, uh, who's been doing some indiscriminate bombing in Yemen, who is also in a position where they might have a huge humanitarian crisis uh, because uh, no food and no water in a lot of the places that Yemen is an extremely poor country. Uh, so, uh, uh, regardless of what has happened in the past, uh, it will take tremendous amounts of leadership, tremendous amounts of due diligence, tremendous amounts of hard work uh, to find some type of solution that will work for all the parties involved in the Middle East. And again, it's, it may not be something uh, that we may like in the end. If it can achieve peace, that would be good. Again, it also may not achieve peace. But I haven't heard anything from our Republican sisters and brothers that would show me that they have any concept of the scope uh, and the dynamics that are involved and what how how much work will be entailed to find some type of solution. Let's find a solution to help Libya get it going. Let's find a humanitarian solution to save the people who are starving in Syria. Need a, a humanitarian solution for all the Syrians who have gone into Europe. Uh, we have, how are the Kurds going to be handled uh, if there is a solution? Can they get their own homeland or portions of homeland in Syria? Um, Will the Turks agree to that? Uh, what is the Saudis' end game in all of this? Uh, 
The Saudis are, are striking out uh, against uh, U.S.'s other interests there. And how much longer should we be carrying water for the Saudi Arabians? Uh, I'd like to hear my brothers and sisters on the Republican side go into this and what their solutions would be in a little bit more depth than what I've been hearing so far.